I'm going to be walking you through the reimbursement detail function. The documentation is always up and it's always the latest. It's much quicker for us to update the docs than uploading a new video each time. So please make sure you check this page. There's sample usage examples and ex um, descriptions of what each section means, the different types of attributes that you can use and that we support. And so let's get into it. What you see on the screen here is pretty much the final version, a very basic um, output of what you can expect if you use reimbursement details. Okay, so th what you see here, this table that I'm highlighting from column F onwards, it's outputted um, directly with a single formula and that's equals gorilla underscore reimburse details. And then inside the function formula, I've hard coded in, typed in, last 30 days in quotation marks. Um, that's the easiest way that you can do it because the only mandatory input is the time period. We have a lot of preset time periods and again if you go into the documentation you can see you can do custom periods as well where you enter a start and an end date and I'll show you that as well as all these different ones like last month, yesterday, today, this year, etc. Right now I've got it to last 30 days. Here's, if I delete this one single formula, it deletes the entire table because this one formula will auto-populate everything. To see it again, gorilla underscore reimburse details. As you type it in, you'll see that it drops down and it'll um, filter through the different functions that we support. Reimburse details. I'm going to do, again, last 30 days. And what this is going to do is it's going to pretty much data dump all the reimbursements over the last 30 days. Because I didn't enter a specific SKU or ASIN or anything, it's just going to do it across the entire account. So any every single SKU, every single um, reimbursement there is, it's going to display it in this table and you'll see the different reasons, the associated Amazon orders, the different cases, IDs that it was um, came up if you had um, requested it to Amazon. The different reasons is going to be the most important because if you see something like lost warehouse, then you know that you obviously should be getting your money back. And so it's going to show you like the total amount of that specific unit um, as well as whether anything was reimbursed. Amazon will automatically reimburse you for um, anything that pops up like this, but there's always cases where uh, it's missing and that's where you can use this table, use this function to go through and filter by SKU if you want, or have one of your people to go through it and see and make sure that the quantity reimbursed and the inventory as well as the total matches up. Okay, so for example in this, let me expand this column out a bit. Okay, expand a little bit more so that you can just read it. So this is the uh, number of units reimbursed via, via cash. Uh, this is the units reimbursed if Amazon actually finds something and then puts it back into inventory. And then this is the actual total amount that was reimbursed, okay? So I'll take you through a couple of scenarios where the first one will show you that this um, this first order ID, this one was lost outbound. And so they reimbursed via cash, obviously because they lost it, they couldn't have refounded it, or they could, but in this case they didn't find it, and so this it remains at zero. And so the total quantity reimbursed was one. If I move on to the next one, what you see here is that first of all, this one was first um, reimbursed via cash. Okay, so something happened with this item and so you receive that reimbursement from Amazon but then they rever reversed it because they probably, and, and it makes sense here because now this shows up as a one which means that they found the inventory so they took that money back so they clawed it back, that's what the clawback is or the reimburse, um, reversals and so the total is um, now zero because minus one plus one equals zero. So there's nothing to get reimbursed for. So this is how you can use uh, um, this reimburse to see which one needs reimbursing and which ones are still the IDs or the transactions that you are entitled to receive. So you can go through this. The ones that you want to look for the most is going to be lost warehouse, lost outbound. Um, even for the customer 
uh, returns in the specific spreadsheet if you have access to reimburse details will show you um, the amount that was returned and so you could argue that uh, this customer returned it, but then if there's something missing, uh, you, you're still entitled to a partial reimbursement. And so that's what you can request Amazon. On the re reimbursement reimburse reversals, not all reversals are correct. And so this is another item where you could have a junior employee um, or a assistant or somebody to go through these reversals, make sure that these are actually legitimate and it's not just done automatically by Amazon because they just um, couldn't be bothered to look into it a bit more. Um, so if there's like a million dollars in reversals, you could get back a certain amount because if it was done incorrectly again. So there's something to um, work through as well. Damaged warehouse, you obviously want to get reimbursed for that. So let's check this one out. So damaged warehouse... Um, you'll see that one was returned, well, reimbursed as cash, okay, because, and then the second one was not reimbursed as cash. They actually found the unit, and so that was added back into your inventory. So this is how you read it. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. You can um, really filter down by the uh, SKUs, the ACINs, and get an idea of which product is the pro um, problematic one, uh, something to look out for which specific reason is causing a lot of your reimbursements coming um, so that you can you can be proactive if you see that there's a lot of stuff being lost um, then you have to you can know whether there's a specific fulfillment center that's the cause of that um, there's just a lot of things if I dig into the formula a little bit more right now I just have last 30 days you can make it dynamic and reference a specific cell so rather than just typing it in I could just select this drop down that I've created, pre created, everything from column A to D is just for reference only so that I can just quickly click and create a formula. You can see that instead of typing in last year, I can just select that, comma, and then for the filter, do I want to enter a specific SKU? So let's say I want to get the reimbursement details for one SKU only or like a range of SKUs, right? But let's, for this example, I'm just going to select this. I don't know if there's any for this, comma, and then the reason, is there a specific reason that I want to look up? So first of all, I'm just going to do it by the SKU first. So I'm looking up for this year for the SKU in B1. And there shouldn't be because this is a, um, right, this is a discontinued one, I believe. Okay, so let's see, let's go through the list. You can see that I can select a number of ranges for the SKU. So rather than just either manually typing one, I can select a range. Okay, so here we go. So in this range of SKUs from C4 to C16, C4 to C16 here, I've got all of these reimbursements. There's quite a lot. Okay, there's quite a lot here. It's um, And I did it from this year, so from 2021 start to the current date. Uh, of end of June this is what's come up and it's coming up like this now if I want to dig down deeper and I only want to look up lost inbound okay I'm going to copy this and I'm going to edit the formula so I I could um, make it into a dynamic one if I want but for this example I'll just manually type it in and now I can see that I filtered down and pretty much brought in all the reimbursed ones where it was lost. And so this can also give you a much better understanding, especially for management, of where the reimbursements are coming from, which specific SKUs and the reasons. So you can have a very good detailed breakdown. I mentioned earlier that you could have a start and an end date. This one is currently looking up this year. But let's say I wanted to do, say, like 2021, uh, 01, 01 to 2021, 01, 13. Uh, just some two random dates. So what I'm going to do in the formula is now in that first section, it's highlighted green, so I'm on the period section rather than just entering that. For any start and um, end dates, I'm going to select custom. Okay, and then the SKUs, I've got the SKU, I've got the reasons, comma, the start date is going to be this one, the end date is going to be this one. Okay, so I've got everything here, enter, and now it will go through everything and tell me that there's nothing. So let me broaden this one a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this reason. 
Okay. And I still have to leave it empty, otherwise um, to show that just use whatever default value um, rather than specifying the reason. So now when I get rid of the reason, there's no specific one, but it's now going to show me all of these uh, between the specific dates of the start of 01 to 13. And so you can really fine tune if there's a specific month or a specific week where you're having a lot of reimbursements come in um, or there's a lot of issues. This is a really good way to fine tune and really seek where the issues are.